Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. Welcome. We're so glad you're with us today for Jesus the Healer. We have been having such a good time. Yes. We've been ministering on the subject of walking in love. And my, 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 it reaches every arena of our life. Yes. And uh, as our love walk grows, our fellowship with God and our spiritual life is growing. Amen. 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 And uh, it's a privilege to know the highest flow that God has provided for us. So we invite you, if you have not been able to join us for previous episodes, go back and watch them. We've spent many weeks now on it and it'll be a blessing to you. Why is it? Because everything of our, every arena of life and every flow of our life is affected by our love walk. Amen. Why? Because our love walk is us tapping into and flowing with the nature of God that's on the inside of us. God is a love God and he has poured his love into us that we're now living out of a flow of divine love, not just human love. We're, we're, we're finished with human love. So human love is not our flow. Divine love is our flow. And God provided that love wherewith we can love others and love him with that divine love. Amen. Uh, we've been quoting Romans 10, 17 that says, faith comes, uh, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But Galatians 5, 6 says, faith works by love. Mm -hmm. Faith comes by hearing, but it doesn't work by hearing. It works by love. Yes. If we're not walking in love, our faith won't work. Yes. And so uh, the more we walk in love, the more we can conduct business with heaven by faith. Yes. And the more we can receive of what heaven's provided for, for us, because all that heaven's provided for us, we receive it by faith. Yes. Yes. And when love is in place, when we're staying on love's property, our faith will work right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, we've been going through 1 Corinthians chapter 13, starting at verse 4. And, you know, there's an inclusive list, a check, it's a divine checklist yeah. <laughs> instructing us um, how the love of God responds, yes. how that divine love in us thinks how it behaves, yes. how it responds to people, how it treats people. Yeah. Yeah. Love is patient. Yeah. Love is kind. We've gone through those um, in detail. We're going to keep going uh, forward with this. Um, the King James says this in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 4, love vaunteth not itself. Well, that's not a word we quite would use too much today. So in looking at other translations of what they say about that phrase, it says love is not forward and self-assertive. So love makes no parade. What's parade? Putting on display yourself. Love is not boastful. Love does not brag. Love doesn't sing its own praises. Mm. Love doesn't strut. <laughs> Love is not anxious to impress. Love doesn't put itself up as being important. And when it says, uh, listen, everyone who belongs to God matters. I mean, every human matters. Jesus Jesus was the love gift right. of God to humanity. Right. But when you're born again, something more, is in, something more important is in you, the life of God, the yes. nature yes. of God, yes. right? Yes. But you don't put yourself as being, uh, being more important than the next guy. Right. What's, in, what's in us is important. Yes. But we aren't the important ones. It's who's in us that lifts us. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
So this is what love vaunteth not itself means all of those different things we just read. Uh, so let's look at this in detail. Love doesn't put on display what it has and does to be seen of men. Listen, God wants you to have things, but not so that you can make someone else feel bad. Right. Not so you can make yourself look elevated yes. in the eyes of others. God will bless us. Listen, I believe Christians ought to have the best homes on the block. Right. They ought to have the businesses in, the businesses in town, that the best to drive, the best to enjoy. Why? Because God says he has given us richly all things to enjoy. Yes. They're for our enjoyment. They're not for us to try to impress others oh, with. Yes. They're for our enjoyment. Yes. They are not so we can derive our self-worth from them. Yes. Our self-worth comes from who is in us, yes. who we are in Christ, yes. that we belong to him and he belongs to us. Yes. It doesn't matter. It's not about who we are out here. It matters who we are in him. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So when we're walking in love, we're not displaying what we have so others can think us as something more than them. Yes. Love doesn't brag on itself. Mm -hmm. Listen, love doesn't even brag on its own spirituality right. because that's an unspiritual act. <laughs> Spirituality doesn't dr brag about spirituality yeah. because yes. then it becomes unspiritual. Yes. Um, it doesn't brag on its works. Mm -hmm. Amen. And can I tell you this? It does not display its own opinions. Right. Mm. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's good. Because your opinions are your own way of thinking and, right. and right. love is not out inserting and right. putting on display its own way of thinking, right. trying to get its own way. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. Love doesn't put itself up front. Amen. Mm. What's that mean? If you're, if we're putting ourselves up front, we're having to put someone else behind us. Right. We're stepping up in front of somebody else to put ourselves first. Love does not promote itself. Right. We, we have to uh, make sure that the flow of the world doesn't get into the flow of our life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, in the business world, you need to let people know that you are what you're making available to them. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You let them know. Um, you, you present to them a product that will be a blessing, that will help them make their life better, help you, but we don't, we have to make certain that in our business life, we don't use people the wrong way. When a customer feels valued, yeah. 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 you won't have any problem having customers, That's right? right? That's right. Yeah. Um, when you're a businessman, you're offering people something that's going to bless them. Mm -hmm. yes. But you don't want to ever just use people right. without how can I be a blessing? Right. Right. Um, there is in the business world such a thing as what they call networking. Mm -hmm. You you yes. get to know people mm -hmm. and it's a business to business type thing. Yes. Just make sure in your personal life that that networking doesn't become to your advantage and their disadvantage. God puts people in your life, not so you can use them. Not so you can get something out of them that lifts you, but leaves them without blessing or benefit in that, in that transaction. God, he puts people in our life not so we can use them, but so he can use them. Yes. He will use people to help us. Yes. When God uses someone, he blesses them for letting him, for them obeying him. Yes. He'll bless them. Yes. When people use people, yes. uh, they get pushed down so that we can have the advantage. Yes. Yes. Don't be a people user. Right. Be a people blesser, yes. even in your business. Yes. Bless people. Yes. Amen. 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 And it will make all the difference in God's participation, his ability to participate. Yes. If we're just using people, 
uh, for our own business without any thought of how it, what, what it means to them. God can't participate in that. But when we have a genuine concern, Father, thank you for the customers you send yes. to me today. Make me a blessing to them. Yes. Let me help them enjoy something more yes. in this life because they met me. Yes. When you have that heart, God will get involved and he'll send you a, 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 a truckload of customers. Amen. 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 Because he knows they'll be treated right. Yes. Amen. Amen. Um, I, I hadn't thought about this, but um, it's been a long time since I thought about this, but we've even studied in past revivals. We saw it recorded with Charles Finney. We saw it record, recorded with Amy Sybil McPherson. She would go and preach the gospel to people when the life of God would come into that community and there would be an outbreak of a revival, the whole economy of the city would change. Why? Because people who owed bills that were trying to dodge their responsibility, when they got born again, God would deal with them. Do right, make it right, and God would bless them so that they could make that right. They would go off and they would go and pay bills that they owed. You know, if we owe it, we pay it. I said, if we owe it, we pay it. We don't get mad at a vendor for trying to collect what we owe. It's not right. These are flows of walking in love. We don't try to get out from what we owed and act like we don't owe it. No, if we'll bring our faith, God can get involved in faith yes. and he will give you whatever you need to make it right. Yes. I, you don't want to ever injure your faith trying to save money. If we owe it, we pay it and yes. God will bless us in that transaction. Yes. And that's why in these revivals, whole cities would be changed economically. And in fact, there were city people, people who were uh, authorities in cities that would get together and invite people like Amy Simple McPherson to come and hold a revival in their city because they saw the economies of cities change when the word of God started getting dominance. Yes. And in our own life, we give the word of God dominance. It will change the economy of our household. Right. It will change our personal yes. economy. Amen. Why? Because love is not out trying to promote itself and get something for itself. It's out to be a blessing to others and God will bless us as we bless others. So what God, the business God gives you or whatever job he gives you, uh, bring your faith to it. Yes. Treat people right in yes. it. Amen. Yes. And God, God will trust you with more and more and yes. more. Um, here it says that um, love doesn't put itself up as being important. Love doesn't, is not anxious to impress others. If we will realize who we are in Christ and renew our minds to who we are in Christ, we overcome any bad self-image. Mm -hmm. yes. And we rid ourselves of the need to try to impress people yes. with yes. things. Yes. <clears throat> with doing what we ought not do just so they'll like us. Never go against your own spirit to be accepted by someone else. Never violate your own spirit. You're accepted in the beloved. Amen. Uh, another another um, characteristic of the divine love of God, it says love is not puffed up is what the King James translation says. Uh, other translations of that phrase says, says this, love doesn't have a swelled head. Yeah. Love is not conceited. Yeah, love is not arrogant. Mm -hmm. Ah, how yeah. you carry yourself, yeah. right? Yeah. right. Yeah. Love doesn't look down upon others. Right. Love gives itself no airs. Airs, yeah. A-I-R-S. It doesn't put on a haughty attitude, so yes. to speak. Love has no pride. Right. Love is not proud. Amen. How many of you know that was the devil's downfall? Yes. That's right. That's right. Love doesn't cherish inflated ideas of its own importance. Right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what's this mean? Love doesn't seek to take the center stage of life and say, look at me, look at me, look at me. Right. Right. 
Amen. 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 Conceit will put itself up front, but not love. Love isn't always trying to be the biggest and loudest thing in the room just so it can be seen. Um, When we're part of the body of Christ, we don't seek to get recognition. Let's say, let, let me talk about the local church. In the local church, we're not only willing to serve if the position is visible, but not willing to serve if it goes unnoticed. That's good. You see? Um, Because the more we grow up spiritually and develop spiritually, the more we seek, if I could say this, to be, to blend as unity. Mm -hmm. That's good. It's about the unit. It's about the whole body. It's not about me. It's about the whole body. I grew up, um, I was a piano performance major in college, so I spent lots of times on the piano bench, hours. I can't tell you how much time I spent on the piano bench. And in that, I played for uh, our local church. I grew up, when I was in eighth grade, I was the organist for our our local church. Did that till I went off to, till I moved away, went to college. Um, then, but the whole time I was the pianist for every junior high choir, for every high school choir, for every all school production. And, um, I spent much time around musicians. Um, I spent a lot of time playing for choirs. There is nothing in this world like the voice of a choir. You, you, there, there are some people who have wonderful solo voices, yeah. but you get a choir yes. and it's yeah. like a rumble. I mean, it's like a force yeah. coming at yeah. you. Yeah. And there is a momentum with yes. that, that That's one right. voice yes. can never produce. Yes. Yeah. The body of Christ, we are one unified body moving yeah. together. Yeah. And it, it, there's a momentum and a force and a power that yes. comes in the unity of that. Yes. Yes. And how many times our choir director would say, if you cannot hear the person standing next to you singing, you're singing too loud. You have to be able to hear. This is called blending. Vocally, it's called blending. You need to be able to hear the other person. This is not solo time. In a choir setting, this is about the whole being heard as one, not one being heard over the whole. And this is what spiritual maturity does for you. You're not seeking to stand out. You're seeking to bring the whole to a place of moving together. Unity is so key to a revival, to a local church, to a vision that God gives. It's all about unity Uh, because God loves unity. He hates division. And when we put ourselves up front and it's about me being heard, me being seen, me getting pulpit time, me getting visibility time, I, you don't have to promote yourself. Love will promote you. That's right. Amen. That's if right. you're in love, love will promote yes. you. Yes. And love is looking to, if I could say this, be invisible in the one unit. Mm-hmm. Right. That's right. Not visible in front of the unit. Right. That's true. Amen. Amen. That will help musicians. That yes. will help the church family. Yes. That will help everybody. Yes. It will help a family. It's not just about what you want. You know, whenever, whenever my family, whenever we would go home to see mother and daddy, um, I moved away from Oklahoma. I was raised in Oklahoma. I moved away from home when I was 17 uh, to go to college, but I uh, moved away from Oklahoma in 1991. So when we would go back, um, me and my family, I would tell my kids, when we're there, it's not about what you want to do. Mother and daddy are the head of this family Mm -hmm. and it's about what they want to do while we're here. Don't you get there and say, I don't want to do this. I want to do, uh, 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 you blend or I'm going to handle you till you do blend. (laughs) (laughs) Why? Because in a family, it's not about you demanding your own way and messing up the entire atmosphere and flow of a family. It's the same way in a local church. Yes. It's not about things getting done a certain person's way. The pastor's the head of that family, right. that local church family, right. and he leads. Yes. 
And it's not about, well, I didn't get my voice. You're not there to get your voice. You're there to be a unit. You're there to be a body. You're there to be one. You're there to contribute to the vision that God gave that man of God. God gave that pastor. No local church is there to fulfill your vision. That local church is there to fulfill the vision God gave the pastor. And this helps people to know because sometimes people haven't been taught that. You might have a vision that God's given you for your life, but it's not the church's job to fulfill that. God gave you that for your own life. But as you help the pastor fulfill the the vision God gave that local body, then God will see to it your vision is fulfilled. You don't have to or, or promote your own vision among a local church. A pastor should not adopt any one congregation member's vision. But the congregation is there to adopt the vision God gave the pastor because the vision comes from God to the pastor. It doesn't come to the pastor through the congregation. It's the same thing with a business. It's the same thing with a family. There's a divine order. And this is what I told my family, my kids, whenever we go see mother and daddy, it's not there. We're not there to do what you want to do. We are not with you. You're with us. Right? right? And uh, so this is part of the love flow. You're not there to get everything your way, That's right. but you're there to be a blessing to the way God is directing that whole body. Amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. It's, I, I'm hoping you're saying amen in your home or right where you're at. <laughs> Why? Because love is not trying to get its own way. That's right. It doesn't have to put itself up front because it's trying to be invisible in the body. Just bring a supply, bring a supply. And, um, you know, your kids are important in your family. Your kids, they are, but they're not the center. You know, uh, the plan of God is a center. Jesus is the center and we're going to do everything to fulfill what he put. And we don't want to teach our kids. You're the most important thing in this world. Right. (laughs) No, you're part of something that's the most important thing in this world. That's the body of Christ, the plan of God. Amen. What Jesus is doing. Amen. Uh, How about we move along? Because I could stay on that a good long time. Um, But there's another characteristic that's spoken of in 1 Corinthians 13 about love. It says, love does not behave itself unseemly. Mm. Now, other translations... uh, referring to that phrase, say this, love doesn't behave unbecomingly. So your behavior is a reflection of your love walk. Love never does the graceless thing. Mm. Mm. My mother used to say to to us growing up, to my sister and I, and I I especially remember it with me. (laughs) She would say, you always be a lady. Right, that's good. You always be a lady. Mm -hmm. I knew the connotation of what was carried with that. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember God God has said things to me that has helped me. When I would say, um, God, as as a woman leading uh, a ministry, Mm -hmm. you say, how do you do that leading a ministry? I forget that I'm a woman. I just, Mm -hmm. it's not me being a woman that's right. going to accelerate it or hinder it. It's yeah. me following the plan of God. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Amen. Doing this by the anointing of God, yeah. by the power of God. I'm not trying to prove anything yeah. as a woman. Right. Yeah. It's, not, it's not being a woman that helps people or hurts people. It's the anointing that blesses yeah. people. Yeah. Just yeah. give them yeah. just the anointing. Yes. The word yes. Yes. blesses people. Yes. Yes. Just yes. give them the word. And I've always, and I remember in, I was talking to God and I said, God, I always want to be honorable toward you. And when I'm having to deal with others and he would just say to me, just be a lady. Mm-hmm. And I remembered exactly what that meant. I knew what that meant because I, I was raised with that. What's that mean? Uh, don't do a graceless thing. Yeah. And this is what one translation says about love. It doesn't do the graceless thing. I just lead with love and lead by the Holy Ghost, by the Word of God, yes. and uh, people, people will follow the anointing. Amen. One, another translation says about love doesn't behave itself unseemly. It says love never lacks courtesy. Well, we visited that before, didn't we? Yes. Love doesn't act improperly. Love is not ill-mannered. 
Love has good manners. Ah, oh, if we're not demonstrating good manners in our home, we're not walking in love in our home. Our, our manners should not be checked in at the door Amen. when we walk into our house. Our manners should not be checked into the church door when we walk in. No, we carry our manners with us because they are a flow, a demonstration of the love of God. God is a perfect gentleman. He will not violate someone's will. He will not treat someone outside of love. Amen. Love doesn't force itself upon others. Ah, another one says love isn't indecent. Ah, that's in the way we speak, the way we think. What about the way we dress ourselves or carry ourselves? Love isn't indecent. Love's ways are ever fair, meaning we're not one way toward one and another way toward another. We don't have a shifting standard based on who we're dealing with. We're fair. Uh, love isn't rude. Love isn't injurious, meaning something won't get worse because we showed up. It gets healed up because we showed up. Look at this. Love does not dishonor others. Wow. That's huge. That's huge. If we'll deal honorably with all men, no man can offend us. Offense can destroy relationships and take us way off course. But if we'll be honorable, no matter if someone else isn't honorable toward us and they offer us offense, when we respond with honor, we don't take the offense because honor already is our flow. Well, praise the Lord. You don't want to miss next time. We've got more. We've got to get, we've got to get through a lot of it. So come back and don't miss next time. But until next time, remember this, Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Love is to lead and govern us, and we are to make it our quest to pursue the way love leads. Victories await us as we learn to walk in the truths of divine love found in this book by Nancy Dufresne. Order Love, The Great Quest now at DufresneMinistries.org. On this CD, Confessions of Healing, Nancy Dufresne begins to lead in confessions for healing from the scriptures, allowing time for the listener to repeat them after her. If you or someone you know is in need of healing, this CD will be a blessing to you. Order today at DufresneMinistries.org. If you need prayer, please call our prayer line. We have trained ministers on staff who are ready to agree with you for your miracle. In Nancy Dufresne's classic book, The Healer Divine, we're presented with a study of the healings of Jesus. Your faith will be stirred to believe and act as the healed He has made you to be. Order this book now at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible. This is Pastor Nancy Dufresne, and I'm the president of World Harvest Bible Training Center in Murrieta, California. One of the things that Dad Hagen would often say to us is every generation must be evangelized and taught, and that preparation time is never lost time. We're so grateful for the opportunity to help train the next generation. One of the things that God is doing in this era is He's training us in the Word and the Spirit. And so we are training the students in that format. It's not simply an academic approach, but a Spirit-led format. Romans chapter 1, verse 11, Paul said, For I long to see you, that I may impart some spiritual gift to the end, that you may be established. This Bible school is a catching school. You're going to receive impartations that come through teaching, through the laying on of hands, and through fellowship with those who are hungry and moving with the Word and the Spirit. The difference is the spirit of faith here. Yes. 
Uh, yeah. It's not just the book learning. But this right here is about the spirit of faith and learning yeah. the life in that spirit of faith. Yes. After coming to the Bible school and looking back on the time that I've had here, I really see how God orchestrated things and brought me into a place where I could get the impartations that I was going to need uh, in order to move forward in my life. And even to this day, being out of Bible school now for uh, you know eight years almost, it's it's crazy to see all the things that are still working in my life through Bible school and uh, through the relationships that I built here. Um, just because you have a family, just because you have uh, you know, things that are going on in your life already or things that maybe you're already doing. If you feel uh, any form of a lead to come to the Bible school, put the application in, make the first steps. You know, follow the peace in your heart. And if you have peace about coming, everything will come together. You just keep making the steps. You know, one of the things that I loved about the Bible school is we have so many guest ministers and so many different perspectives that come into play and you get to learn um, all the different things that help make them successful and you also get to learn what to watch out for. Before I joined Bible School, I was very career oriented. I was very education oriented, which are good things. However, it engrossed my life to a point where I lost direction towards what God had in store for me. But because I went to World Harvest Bible Training Center, it brought me back to a grounded, established, um, anchored place in God's Word. And because of that, I was able to move towards what God has for me. And what God had for me was more than what I could even imagine for myself. More than what the success that I thought the world can bring me. I think for me, uh, the whole picture of Bible school is learning how to look to God and how He takes care of you because you're in His plan. It's never too late. Yeah, yes. You're never too old. <laughs> I encourage anybody that uh, you're even thinking about coming to the school. If you're thinking about Bible school, don't think anymore. Just go ahead and fill out your application and submit it. You're not going to regret it. You're going to build relationships that last you a lifetime. The Catherine I was before Bible school is a completely different person than who I am now. So we invite you, pray about becoming part of World Harvest Bible Training Center, a place where you will receive impartations, demonstrations, and revelations. God bless you.